Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. It's slowly becoming more and more apparent to the gaming community as a whole what a minefield trademark law can be, especially when couched in terms of the AAA publishing companies. To some, it appears to be a normal matter of due process, while others look upon it very much like a starving dog guarding a scrap of food, with many people out there not fully understanding why these companies act the way they do when faced with a potential trademark infringement. I, for one, was ready to make one assumption when it's actually very clearly possible that something else may be going on. Now, that story of trademark defense continued in an unfortunate set of circumstances surrounding a game that I, among a great many others, have been anticipating its release of for over a year. Pray for the Gods. Earlier this week, the developers of Pray for the Gods, No Matter Studios, posted the following onto their site's newsletter. So, we didn't want to do this, but we had to change our game name from Pray to the Gods to Pray for the Gods. Thankfully, we get to keep the logo, but we will spell it Pray, A-E. Honestly, we could make this entire newsletter about our thoughts on this. Trademark law is what we are dealing with, and we aren't under any NDA, so we can state the opposition in this situation, Bethesda slash Cinemax. We could have fought this, and we did think about it for quite a while. Something like a trademark opposition can be long, and depending on how far someone wants to fight it, can be very expensive. We didn't want to spend our precious Kickstarter funds, nor did we want to have to ask for additional funds to fight this in court. Using backer money towards something that doesn't go towards the development of our backer rewards felt horrible to us. Even if we did win, we'd have to spend a solid chunk of our funds, and in our opinion, it wasn't worth it. The truth is, we initially thought about naming the game Prey for the Gods, A.E., prior to our initial trailer. The logo has both the woman praying against the duality of prey, and thankfully we get to continue to use that. We figured people would have a hard time trying to type in the AE symbol in search engines, etc. Now, this was back in 2015 when we posted a trailer on Facebook and Twitter with had no idea if 100 or even 1,000 people would watch the trailer. We were applying for both Pray for the Gods and Pray for the Gods trademarks shortly after we realized the extent of what we were making. Unfortunately, Zenimax chose to oppose our mark, as they felt both were too similar to their mark Prey. While we disagree with their opposition, we were able to come to an agreement. It was something that kept me up at nights, and no doubt shifted our focus from our game frequently. Worrying about the outcome, if we went to trial, if we'd lose our fans or walk away from the mark and still potentially get sued for millions on trademark infringement, this is really something no starting company should have to deal with, let alone a tiny team of three. So the fact that we came out of the other end intact, still developing the game, was a win. One that will no doubt shape our company moving forward. So it's evident that this issue has been bubbling under the surface for a while, as according to IGN, a quote, Bethesda representative, who will remain nameless for fear of a paper cut or something, stated that they had reached out to No Matter Studios as early as 2015, and multiple times since then. Also, they had posted the following statement. We really didn't have much of a choice. If we don't oppose the mark, we risk losing our Prey trademark and that isn't acceptable. Unfortunately, that's how trademark law works. And that much is usually true. Many of you have heard me utter the phrase use it or lose it multiple times when in reference to the AAA publishers. Well, trademark law is the largest example of that, where a company that maintains a trademark must protect it religiously and usually quite zealously or else risk there being a precedent being set that would open a wedge for some other company to actually file for a removal of the trademark or an injunction to take over the trademark in similar disputes. And in this particular brand of trademark dispute, Bethesda has been known to be highly litigious over the years, as this is the third case in five years that Bethesda has decided to throw their weight around when dealing with a smaller development company. In February of 2015, it was found out that Bethesda was going after Blue Blocks Games for their naming of the game Fortress Fallout, because everything Fallout is Fallout, not something else. Blue Blocks, again, being a smaller developer, simply did not possess the funds necessary to take on the Bethesda's monolithic parent company, Zenimax, in a protracted legal battle. As a result of their lack of means when in relation to Zenimax, Blue Blocks opted to rename their iOS game a very cheeky Fortress Outfall in a well-deserved middle finger to Zenimax and Bethesda. Going further back to March of 2012, Mojang settled a legal dispute with Bethesda surrounding their game Scrolls because, you guessed it, they felt it was a trademark infringement to their Elder Scrolls franchise. They were able to keep their game named Scrolls as long as they surrendered their trademark for it, which may have been Bethesda's original design and going after the company to begin with. So, we do have a demonstrable state of litigiousness with Bethesda that, no matter studios, I feel rightly attempted to avoid. 
However, I can't help but shake this feeling that there is something else going on here outside of their normal trademark protection. Now, of course, I have no clear evidence of this, and it is purely conjecture and speculation at this point, but I suspect that this may all be in relation to something even more disgusting and something that Bethesda would not be quite so justified in doing. I strongly suspect this might be in relation to search ranking. Yes, the dreaded SEO or search engine optimization that is the bane of us all. You see, it's quite readily apparent that no one in their right minds would mistake Pray for the Gods as a first-person action suspense game where you battle black blobs that can mimic everyday objects. It's also quite readily apparent that no one without a heavy dose of horse tranquilizers at Fallout would ever be mistaken for an iOS game, or that Morrowind or Skyrim could possibly have anything to do with a deck builder game. And these games were most certainly not attempting to mislead the consumer in such a way, no. No evidence of their logos being even remotely similar to Bethesda's in any way. In actuality, it's quite impossible to confuse which one of was a Bethesda title and which was not. And yes, this still does not dismiss the use-it-or-lose-it climate in which trademark law resides, but it is still highly likely that Bethesda wished the names to be changed in order to promote higher search rankings. Making sure your game rises to the top within search results can mean literally millions of dollars of potential revenue for AAA publishers. And to find an example of how important SEO is to the AAA publisher, one need go no further than Sega Japan, when in 2013 they had decided to issue DMCA strikes on any video on YouTube even mentioning the game Shining Force, which resulted in a great many YouTube channels getting deleted. Total Biscuit himself received two copyright strikes during that sweep and now four years later has just lifted his boycott of their titles on his channel. Uh, the reason they did so was so that their new game Shining Arc would rise to the top in search results. The unfortunate aftermath of their heavy-handed approach was that some YouTube channels still remain deleted to this day with no hope of getting them reinstated. This is a false equivalency when discussing trademark infringement, but it is still a poignant reminder of how important search rankings are to AAA publishers and the lengths they will go to in order to make sure that their game rises to the top. Trademark law is tricky. It is a veritable minefield to navigate, and I am by no means qualified to talk on the finer points of law concerning it. For discussions like that, I prefer to leave it up to those that are qualified, such as the video game attorney or Leonard French, everyone's favorite copyright attorney people who are qualified to speak on such matters, but regardless of that, it seems that this could very well be an instance of a legal precedent being used as an excuse to get away with something else. It wouldn't be the first time that Bethesda has done this, and it most certainly will not be the last. And it's a shame, really, to see a games company that used to enjoy the reputation of consumer friendliness that Bethesda once did slowly devolve over the years to be no better than Activision, Sega, Sony, or Electronic Arts. To see a game's publisher fall so far from grace that even their do-no-wrong stigma that they had enjoyed for years is even beginning to wash away. Soon, nothing will remain but the stark greed that typifies the AAA industry. I think it worth noting that No Matter Studios expressed their concern that they would be making use of backer money if they were to pursue this in what would be a protracted legal battle, and this is an example of the night and day contrast between smaller developers and AAA corporations, and it is part of what makes the indie game industry so fantastic. The fact that they actually give a damn about their customers. That they still know that consumer faith and goodwill can carry you through in a lot of situations where simple money alone will not. Nothing buys forgiveness quicker than loyalty, and nothing sells games for an indie developer more than maintaining a sterling reputation of togetherness. And I think that No Matter Studios is earning that reputation by a simple virtue of being more concerned about creating a good game that we can all enjoy than sticking it to the men. I can safely say that there are a great many of us that wish Zenimax and Bethesda had taken down a peg or two, but I'm grateful to No Matter Studios for their thoughtfulness and their calm in the face of what could have been a very ugly legal battle. But don't forget to let me know your thoughts on this matter down in the comments. Does anyone still feel Bethesda was in the right? What do you think about No Matter Studios' decision? Also, if you're new to the channel, please do remember to subscribe. That button should be down there somewhere, but it might be hiding. Think of it as a fantastic version of Whack-A-Mole. Try to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons as quickly as you can, and don't forget to post your times. We'll see how many speedrunners we have in the house. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and thanks for watching.